welcome back to sector one the first stop you should make for your motorsport fix i'm sid and why do i say i'm sid like we're just introducing ourselves for the first ever time i am sid <laughs> i am sid this is my friend lily and she is my co-host um, but yeah welcome back to sector one finally back duo are back harvey's not here with us yeah. this week because he has rugby priorities over motorsport we can never get the gang together let's be honest like, we can never exactly. get our together now. Exactly. You know, I I'm, I think like we may all be the same person. That's why we can't all be in the same room together. Like, yeah, I feel like I agree. it's something weird like that. Or we're all lizards. It's like one of those, like, could be either. Lizards, I'm thinking. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Um, But we are actually here to talk about what was the Monaco Grand Prix. And it was, it was an okay race, but I feel like the drama of the race itself is yeah. so entertaining. So I feel like it was entertaining for all the wrong reasons but we're going to go through and digest that I think to start off with we had some really peculiar calls all weekend it seemed very peculiar I'm all for safety and I always want things to be safe on track and particularly yeah. a track like Monaco where it's very it's very so tight. tight and if you yeah. don't crash you're potentially crashing into a shop or someone's house. Like, in, like it's yeah. quite dangerous like that. You're you know? going to see a local pub, you know what I mean? Like, you're not, exactly. you're not going into a tech pro barrier most of the time. Exactly. So, obviously, safety is always paramount. But there seem to be some peculiar safety calls by marshals. And if you are a marshal on track, and I picked up a red flag, but I hadn't been told by the race directors to pick up a red flag, if Lily was another marshal, she'd have to put her red flag up too. Because that's just how it yeah. works. So, like, if one does a red flag, everyone else has to do a red flag, and the race director will be like, oh, red flag, because someone put a red flag up. Yeah. So I feel like that's what happened a little bit too much this weekend, is people being overly cautious. Yeah. That incident with Yuki Sino during qualifying, I did not understand the need for a red flag there, because he got back to the pits. Yeah. He was okay. But then, like, when we had Mick Schumacher blocking the pit entrance, we put a red flag up so no one could get into the pits and then when we had Mick Schumacher's car in two it took them two laps to actually put our safety car out and then four laps to red flag it I think that was the bit it's a bit backwards in that situation isn't it because I think yeah. we all knew that that tech pro barrier was going to be damaged when Mick Schumacher crashed during the race but it took yeah a few laps to get anything out there or to even red flag the race and it was definitely even safety car the race yeah exactly it was very very strange it was just yellows to begin with and like virtual but it, yeah, there's there's all, always times to be overly cautious in particular situations, and I completely understand why we're overly cautious now because of situations that have happened. But sometimes it's just these guys are putting themselves at risk every day to get in the car. There isn't always reason for a red flag if it's literally someone managing to get back to the pits because they've just tapped it. I can understand maybe was that there was debris on the racing line. But no one could see anything on the racing line. I think what gets me most is like if we don't want a dangerous race, then let's just never race again. Let's just call Formula One off and never race again. Mm-hmm. Like every time you step in the car, let's be honest, it's dangerous. Yeah, it's not like it's not like football where you know they're not like footballers aren't risking their life. Yeah, they can get an injury and they can, you know they're, they're probably more likely to get an injury because injuries happen every match. But they're not. There's not a likelihood of like severe injury or worse. Yeah. Formula One, there's the big, big likelihood of severe injury or worse in every race, no matter what. And it's like, obviously, we'll touch this a bit later. It's even like with the rain. Like, we're just going to red flag every single wet race now. We, we love it. A wet race in Monaco is what you need. Like, come on. It's what you need in Monaco. Let, let's go on to the, to the rain. Yeah. Then, because obviously, I've done my research in this now. And unfortunately, the rain wasn't the actual reason for. I did hear that, but I didn't know how true flag. it was. Yes. So was, apparently, yeah. according to multiple different sources, so this is very yeah. reputable sources. So things like the race, which are obviously with WTF one, Guy Sports F one said it as well. Guy Sports, I think Motorsport.com have been reporting it too, and these are all very, very reputable sources. And they're saying that the reason we had a delay to the race start wasn't because of the rain that the rain was affecting things elsewhere obviously because you know the weather was coming in and they yeah. had a bit of a power outage for a bit which meant you know the starting lights wouldn't actually work so you can't really start a race if they're not functioning at the time so see I want I want to believe that I do want to believe that but, but the, the but... funny thing is it comes out after everyone's like FIA why did you delay the race what was the need like they didn't say anything whilst it was happening they waited until they made out that it was for the rain 
exactly. But the FAA made it seem like it was for the rain because they were like, you know, severe wets, safety car, everything like that. I feel like if they'd have just said, you know, crap, we've got an issue, we've got a malfunction, everyone backs the pits, would have been an issue. But it's the fact that then we got two laps under the safety car and then they red flagged it a second time. Yeah. I just think, come on, like you obviously knew when you sent them cars out if it was working. I'm like, you should have just put them on the grid and started it. You need them start lights like all of one second. Let's let's speak as if as if the reason for them not, them delaying the start was solely because of the rain, like the original message was. Yeah, that it came out. Like you said, Lily, I feel like it's so silly to delay a race when these drivers are already putting themselves at such a risk. Because the thing is, there was a bit of a window. I feel like there, there was a window it. where they could have had a good few laps racing. And then if the rain got to how it was, they can be like, okay, stop. Because the rain like picked up quite heavily. Quite, yeah. A little bit because it was lightly raining for a bit and they would have been okay on inters or wets, either or, depending on what they picked. Yeah. They would have been okay on that for quite some time, I feel. Obviously not a yeah. racing driver, so like... <laughs> I feel like, though, with this, looking at it sort of from a racing driver's perspective, they have worked their whole lives to be a racing driver. Yeah. Like, you know, some of them literally don't really have an education elsewhere. Like, they're literally racing the only thing they do. And then they get a race red flag because it's raining a bit. Imagine if we red flagged every race in Great Britain that was raining. Like, every touring car race that was raining. Or every G- British GT race that was raining. wouldn't race. We'd never, get, <laughs> we'd never get a chance. It wouldn't be a British touring car championship if we red flagged it every tight race. Like, you look at some of the, you, know, you look at the Formula 4 in touring cars. They race in torrential rain. Mm-hmm. Like, worse rain than it was in Monaco, and they race in that, and they get through that race. Yeah. I just feel like with things we're being overly, overly cautious with some things, it's all for being safe whenever we, all, all the time, we always want to be safe, but you yeah. can't start, you know, tipping around on your tippy toes because that ruins racing then. It ruins the sport. These race directors have come from the month from what I've heard. Like they were Yeah, they're from like WEC and that. Yeah, they so they used to, you know, they used to do like like I said, twenty four hours in the month. I think that's slightly different than the race directors of a of a championship like that, it's a bit different with rain. Mm-hmm. Cause like when if like twenty four hours in the month gets wet and someone crashes, there's gonna be multiple crashes. But I don't think they're ready. I don't want to say they're not ready for F1 because that's horrible of me, because they've got way more experience than me and I'm just sat here like they're not ready. <laughs> but I feel like it's a different sort of calibre of racing in F1 I'm not saying the wet drivers aren't as good as Formula 1 drivers but they're not in F1 mm-hmm. the dri- the cars are completely different the grip is completely different the tyres yeah, everything about it is different I don't think you can direct an F1 race the same as you direct like 20,000 one let's say because I- obviously you delay that for some reasons mm-hmm. I feel like we delayed a race almost to try and help the best drivers in in the world yeah to race like we were like okay let's Let's stop the race because let's dry it out for Sir Lewis and world champion Max Verstappen so that they can have a good race. It's like, honestly, I felt a bit like they were doing it so so Leclerc won his home race. In the end, that's what I thought at first. I I was like, like they were doing it so Leclerc wins. You know what? He finished his home race. Like, hats off to him. Well done. The first time it's ever happened in his career. So I tip my hat to him. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was. I'm glad yeah, you felt the same. You kind of picked up on that as well because I did think I was like, maybe they really just want Charles to like cross the Honestly, that is what win. I thought. I was like, they just want him to win. And I was, and you know, unfortunately that didn't happen. But you know, yeah, that was my thought. I feel like people were more infuriated by the fact we had a delayed start, by the fact we also started with a rolling start oh, oh honestly rolling, rolling starts start. are the worst we've seen i'm not being funny haven't we seen what happens with rolling starts before though as well in the wet mm. like the when thing, was it when the thing is with it though a rolling start happens when a, a standing start cannot happen because it's it's not fair not fair i mean not safe or not fair and in this circumstance is the fact that it would not have been fair to have drivers lining up on either side of the grid because at this stage during the race this is the second time the first time i don't understand but the second time we had two we had one racing line which was pretty much dry at this point which means people starting on whatever side of the grid it was would have been very much so disadvantaged because their line would have still been wet they would have needed to swoop in to take the dry line so it is you can understand it from that perspective I can but part of me thinks again that that is a bit of racing as well because you know at every track it's like Russia for say 
Valtteri Bottas wanted to start P3 because that was like, if he couldn't get pole, he wanted P3 because that was the better racing line. Yeah, the right side of the grid. Yeah, like every racing track has a side where you want to start on it. And it's like, if, imagine if we get into a thing now where it's like, well, we need to roll and start. It's actually not fair on the drivers on like that side because you're not going to get as much grip on that side as you will on that side. I just think like it's racing. Let them race. Just let them race. Like, the best driver will win. Like, let's be honest, the best driver will win it. And I'm saying this, I think the, I think the wet side is actually the opposite side that Max was on. Mm-hmm. Like I actually, and I'm, I was still like, please race, like just get him racing, he'll be fine. The thing with I'm Monaco, like, but we've seen what happens with Roman starts. Yeah. Like we we saw the massive pileup. I think wherever it was in 2020, there was a massive pileup because of a rolling start. And imagine like, look, it didn't happen. But in Monaco, that'd be the worst place for that to happen. Mm-hmm. I think an important part yeah. as well is the fact that we were racing in Monaco. And in Monaco, yeah. it's a tight track. We don't really get overtakes. So having a standing start is probably the best opportunity we were ever going to get of people moving around a lot on the grid as in Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen fighting it out you know that was our kind of yeah. best opportunity for that to to happen and it's obviously happened, it didn't yeah. we didn't get a standing start and you know what would be would be you know all of that yeah. rubbish stuff but that was the very very peculiar and complicated and confusing start of the race we obviously have to then add on that since this obviously this is us going with the original reason of the race yeah. being delayed and red flagged and everything because of the rain but later finding out that it actually is because of technical power issues honestly that was the most exciting thing that's happening in the race let's be honest <laughs> no oh, i the think rest of the race. i think pa gasly was the most interesting thing to happen to the race do you know what i think he was but i feel like that's because I think at a normal race, if something like that was happening, no one would even bat an eye. Be just because it's Monaco, they were just like the, the whole of the race is either on him or on the front runners. Yeah. Like it wasn't anywhere else because there was just nothing going on. I was impressed with Gasly though. I think he had some he good moves good. in a place which is very difficult to overtake. So I know well, the drivers know. he was overtaking weren't exactly yeah. like the best caliber of drivers. So it's yeah. not like Alonso who can double his car in le- in width because yeah. he's that good of a driver. Do you know what I mean? So he managed to get around Joe Guan, yeah. who's a rookie at this racetrack. So we have to kind of... It's his birthday as well. Just going to point it? out. Oh, we share a birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Me and him share a little birthday. I was like, how cool is that? I share a little Twins. birthday with one driver. <laughs> But, but yeah, yeah, Gasly did Gasly did good, and I I personally think he was my driver of the day. But that is Same. just because the camera was following him, so we got to see yeah. his moves. There were probably other moves on the track that we didn't actually see too much of. But yeah, I enjoyed yeah. watching Gasly race. I think personally, it's very upsetting for him because you know we haven't got the contract now with Red Bull. We've we've heard things that Perez have said, how could say to Christian Horner in in the drivers' room. We did hear him say things, so we know that he probably doesn't have that Red Bull contract next season, unless Max leaves, which we know isn't happening because he's in like a fifty-year contract to them. So fifty, probably literally, <laughs> he's, he's probably he's literally in the contract time like twenty-five. I think he signed his life away. Sorry, I'm I'm interrupting your point here completely, but I was looking at that with his Max's contract. I'm like. I want to have kids by the time Max is still like. I want to be married by the time. I'm like not going for kids. Going to be married. So if anyone, anyone listening, just want to be married. It's so weird. Time. Carry on with well, your point. Sorry, interrupt you. I just think it's upsetting for him because he's really, like Gasly's he's just a really good driver, and it really upsets me because he's just not going that Red Bull to be back. And the thing is, he's not just a good driver. He's a good guy. Like he's yeah, a good person. You see him do his little crouch down, his little. Yeah, no. <sighs> it melt. It actually every time the the cameras know to go on Pierre when that happens because they know everyone is going to be like melting inside when that happens. He did it in the pit lane. I was like, no. <laughs> Talking of cameras and being in the right place at the right time or wrong place at the wrong time. Okay. <laughs> the amount of times during this race that I saw Charles Leclerc move, what I assume are his private parts as he's about to sit back down in the car i was just there like can we switch the cap i don't want to watch this like please i have a boyfriend he has a girlfriend he is a driver i am a journalist please move move away you know what really annoys me about that though is like if someone now comments on that on twitter or on anything they're gonna get slated but all sky sports f1 showed him was him messing with his balls and the thing is it wasn't it wasn't like it was a wide angle where you because it starts as a wide angle where you see him sitting in his in his about to sit down in his car but then then actually we zoom into this area of his body and him being a little that is all we can see and we just see him do his 
little wiggle. Completely and I'm like, respect please. it, but I don't want to watch. Don't want to see it. They used to show Lewis Hamilton do that a lot. Yes. Like when Lewis was winning a lot, they used to just show him doing that a lot. I was like, please, just move up to his head. Let's just let's see his respect face. him. Let's respect let, him as a human let's being. Let's see Angela. You know, let, let's see what Angela's up to. Yeah, let's please. not see. Let's not see that. I just think it makes it very makes it very stupid. I'm going to be honest. I think it's just it actually is a little bit uncomfortable, and I know it's a completely like, human thing to do, but at the same time, not on I want to video it, put it online. Like no I would say, thanks. national TV. It's international TV. Yeah, no, it's not even national. It's international. Exactly. And he's there. Not for me. Like if if that was the same and a woman, and the woman was having like a little a move of her boobs, they'd be up for <laughs> Yeah, if someone watched me pull my underwear out of my like. Yeah, private areas people would uproar and be like what the hell that's completely inappropriate but because it's a guy we have to it's sit fine. and watch it we just need to sit and watch like it it's it. fine <laughs> neither do i so sky sports f1 please can we just not see charles leclerc moving his or, private or if, if that camera any is on yeah any driver not just charles any leclerc, driver just every driver but if that does happen please just switch like a combox cam or like a ted cam like any other cam even please a fan just, cam sh- i will take a fan shot even show us you know the the floor his feet you know <laughs> the floor you know show us the halo show us anything show us him wiping his feet off when he gets in the car because he's wet but don't show us that Please don't. i thought i was the, i thought i was the only one that saw how often that happened i think it was no, literally I, every five seconds it. <laughs> it was just another little um... oh yeah. moving on that's probably again the most exciting thing that happened in the race <laughs> i know let's talk about esteban ocon because he got himself a five second penalty and uh extra point to his license and this is a common thing with alpine drivers points and license isn't it isn't it but um hamilton and ocon were really going at it during this race and um there was contact at one of the first stages of their little battle there was but lewis hamilton slightly annoying when things like this happen Mm. because as soon as it happens he's like oh man when you you sort of tell me now man and he's like fully like done with the race at this point and he's like and it just bugs me a bit. And I'm like, mate, you're a seven-time world champion. You have the best driver on that whole grid. And you know it, too. You, you know you're the best. Like, you know, you know, hands up, you are the best. You're just not in the best car at the moment, but you're bringing that car to places it shouldn't be, same as George. Mm-hmm. You know, do we need to complain every time someone... You, you're not fighting with the best anymore. I say that here at Max had about eight crashes last year. But, you know, you're not fighting with the best drivers anymore. So, like, that obviously isn't going to happen with said better. But on S1, I can't. Maybe it will happen because he's not... Not got the same respect as other drivers in the nicest way possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He definitely, yeah. Ocon definitely caused that collision, but I feel like the reason it actually happened is because they both wanted to hit that apex at the same time. They were both like, apex, please. And unfortunately, yeah. two drivers cannot hit the apex at the same time because it does not work like that. Well, Life we've seen that in like Silverstone, that. haven't we? We've seen <laughs> yes. things happen at Silverstone where two drivers cannot go for the same thing at once. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, S- and one driver like, is ahead, and the other driver puts a wheel up the inside, and it causes a crash. That's fine. It's they fine. were using all of the track, though. They were properly like all we over going the place. Them. And I love seeing battles like that. I love, I love a dirtier battle, something which isn't yeah. as clean as normal. I like something Michael Schumacher, Ayrton Senna esque because they're like my favourite drivers. Max Verstappen yeah. style, almost you could say, back in the day a little bit. Um, I love it when they're using all of the track. And it was a good battle. Ultimately, Hamilton obviously won. I don't think there was any doubt in our mind he was going to win that battle. But he did manage to get himself through. It was. It really was. I really actually enjoyed watching it. Ocon just wasn't able to make it stick. He couldn't make the corner stick. So Hamilton was just like... But it's Ocon in, so it's Exactly. And moving on. Okay, so let's talk about the double stack for Ferrari. Not exactly the highlight of of the race for any party involved i don't think oh i was fine i was quite happy <laughs> lily was fine because she's a big red bull fan and she will always hold bias towards them i on she the other hand i'm the journalist in this friendship i'm the journalist and i am unbiased um let's talk about that though because yeah the it, i think what happened there to start off with i think we have to say that carlos signs was confident a little bit earlier on that he would be able to go straight on to slick tyres. He's like, get me onto those drives. I will be able to do it. And Ferrari kept being like, no, no, no. They tried to pit him earlier for to go on to Inters. He said, nope, they cancelled the pit, even though the Ferrari crew were in the pit lane ready for him. Yeah. But Charles Leclerc, on the other hand, who was leading the race, did pit for intermediates. 
And then one lap later, Carlos Sainz, I, I don't know if it's one lap later, it's a few laps later. Carlos yeah. Sainz is obviously leading the race because Charles Leclerc pit. And Carlos Sainz pits and goes on to dry tyres. Charles Leclerc follows him through to go on to dries too, which yeah. messed up the race for both Ferrari drivers. Carlos Sainz was okay. However, his outlap meant that he could not challenge the Red Bull because Sergio Perez managed to just fly through. Um, so Carlos came out behind Sergio and then yeah. Max comes through and then Charles Leclerc. Mr. Homeboy. But there was a little bit of controversy there as well. Let's like touch on the Red Bull controversy in that one with the with the yellow line, pit Oof. line. But I think if you watch the onboard, a bit of understeer hits. He hasn't been penalized. Neither driver has been penalized for that. No, they completely dropped it. In the videos, they say that his one of his tires is on the line, so it's fine. He didn't cross it. Yeah, it's on the line, not cross it. But like, obviously, Ferrari are going to protest that. Like Ferrari, protect, Ferrari like the new Mercedes, actually protest it. <laughs> <laughs> Ferrari weren't meant to do the double stack low. They no, weren't that's meant what confused to me. That, yeah, that confused me too. So how did you not that? mean to do a double stack? Yeah, because that's ve- it has to be very calculated. It's not just like, oh, let's just do this for fun. It's not it's not a fun thing for any party involved. But the thing that confused me is they were they going to be like, if Carlos doesn't pit, then Charles, you come through? Or were they like, yeah, we'll double stack, but then realise, oh, crap, this is where we'll come out if we do this? I think it was more of a, oh, oh shit, like, we we're going to double stack, but then we're not. Mm-hmm. But what I didn't understand is obviously, like, Charles was very angry, but I don't get why everyone's so, like, at Carlos mainly because he was a racing driver using his initiative to go onto slicks just that because Charles didn't cool. just because Charles didn't use his initiative to go onto slicks like, I'm not saying that Charles is a bad race driver he's insane but just because Charles didn't make that decision doesn't automatically mean Carlos is in the wrong for making a call because that's the whole point of being an F1 driver that you know you should be able to make calls about your own car we've seen it with Lewis last year like no it's not pit yet it's not pit and he's won the race yeah you know, the, as, of course, like the stri- strat- strategic, strategi- strategists. <laughs> Thank you. Easy for they, you to say. They obviously know best. Like they know a hundred percent more. Mm-hmm. But let's be honest. If the driver's gonna, I say no more. The driver knows more about what's going on on track. The strategist knows more about what's going to win them the race. If it's like a bog standard normal race. Yeah. So I think, of course, you need to let the drivers have some initiative. Of course, you need to let the drivers choose what they're going to do because otherwise it's boring. Like, what, why are we racing if we're never going to let the drivers choose what they want? Like, it's just a load of poo. Yeah, I think Carlos was completely right in... To make the decision. Inters. And the thing is, when Carlos... When, when we heard the team radio of Carlos being like, I want to go on drives, I want to go on drives. Everyone was like... Schumacher and Alex Albon both pit for drives. And I was sat there with my dad. I was like, if Mick Schumacher in a Haas can do it, Carlos Sainz in a leading Ferrari can do it. And my dad was like, yeah, but can Mick Schumacher do it? I was like, good point. Good point. Could he, though? <laughs> it, 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 did, it didn't really do it. It didn't really do it. Like, oh, Mick, you're... I say he's a really good driver. I think he needs to prove his prove his worth this year. I don't care if you're a last name driver, you need to prove your worth. But another topic. That pulls us into a good bit, actually. That pulls us into the segue oh. of oh, Mick hey. Schumacher's incident on track. Um, what on earth happened? This came out of absolutely nowhere. I think I was so confused at first because all of a sudden I noticed that Kevin Magnussen was out. Yeah, his and was a then, water pressure. His was a water area. pressure issue, yeah. yeah. And then all of a sudden... It, it panned to a house in two pieces in a wall in a tech pro barrier. And I was it, like, it was Kevin! out of nowhere. It was just out of nowhere. It was, it was just out of nowhere. It was literally just, oh, there is All a, of a sudden. There's but a the house. Thing is, I think the way that they did it is they showed before you saw Mick's crash, there was a, a picture of like Kevin walking away looking towards Mick Schumacher. Schumacher's crash you couldn't actually see it so I assumed that then when we saw that crash of Mick Schumacher I thought that was a replay of Kevin Magnussen yeah it but was no. all a bit Haas had a bit of a poopy race and Haas are doing a bit poopy at the moment and I feel really sorry for him because Haas I do love you like you know you've got a special place in my heart you're a new team like we love that for you but do better please mm-hmm. everyone yeah. was very shocked about the car being in two parts but we do have to add that this is a safety thing the yeah, car it's normal. Is designed to separate the gearbox away from the rest of the car so the two tires the rear wing and the gearbox are meant to separate it yeah meant- a high impact it was it was a high impact crash it was a big crash and it was a bad one however it wasn't as bad as it actually looked in a way 
yeah like it was but because it, it looked a lot worse time. no he it's got just, out he was fine I just I think know that the look, car is meant to do that yeah it's like if you look at some indie crashes like sometimes the cars don't do that and they look a hundred times a hundred times no they look they better bad but they're worse yeah. you know what I mean the crashes themselves are better because the car sort of stays in one piece mm-hmm. but the crash itself is actually so much worse whereas F1 safety that it's designed to like yeah for anyone who's I'm thinking people listen I'm, I'm doing a hand gesture I'm She's thinking doing it's actually separating <laughs> yeah I'm thinking right now the podcast, like, it, there we go um I don't know if you've heard but if, if you watch the incident it's a bit confusing you just kind of see him lose it and Mick yeah. Schumacher did tell F1 that the crash was because he was simply 10 centimeters off of the racing line and 10 centimeters is like what the size of your phone it, yeah it's not a lot I think, just about so that's how far he was off the racing line mm-hmm. which meant that he just lost it because obviously parts of the track were very wet still um yeah it was a unfortunate crash it was a shame crash. to see and we red flagged it after all i know me and lily have already spoken after about eight about years you no know, the race had finished and we red flagged it Bit, bit upsetting, bit upsetting. But we had yeah. another rolling start after that for the reason we spoke about because obviously there was an advantage to one side of the track. Yeah. Um, our final big talking point, apart from the race win itself, is Mr. Fernando Alonso. Did- now, I've already made a yeah. comment about how wide this man can make his car, but this man is just having fun now. He's just... Did you see the graphic? Yes. Of some, yeah, of how far away, like, the Alonso pack was from like the Paris pack yeah it was crazy like, it was, honestly it was like most of the racetrack between them like they were both at different end. I'm, I'm doing like that but you know what I mean like different there was like the a track. 35 second gap between them and that was for no reason other than Fernando Alonso wanted to <laughs> like, I just think I think it shows that don't get me wrong I do think a different driver should be in that car we all know my thoughts on that but I think it shows that he's still got it in him He's still an incredible racing driver. He's still He's got all of the skills. But that's the thing with a racing driver is you never lose all of the skills you have. They're well, always no, like, going to be there. You're never going to lose them. You just make external times. factors. Yeah, exactly. Reaction times and external factors which may impact the way your skills can be well, used. You, you look at some like the, some of the best F1 drivers, they'll then go over to like WEC and things like that. Mm-hmm. And they're still just as good. Like, you, you see like, you know, sometimes in... Even in touring cars, you see like what fifty odd year olds racing in it, mm-hmm. and Carlos Sainz Senior is still absolutely smashing it. Yeah, I just think, yeah, amazing. You you go, guys. Like Fernando, go. Like you know, Kimi Raikkonen coming back to NASCAR. Mm-hmm. The Alonso think... train was beautiful. I think. Yeah, amazing. He, I he loved it. Backed everyone up for no reason, and everyone was stuck behind him, and that was just it. Just because he wanted to. <laughs> Yeah, just because he wanted to. And I think, you know what, Alonso, you go, you go, girl. You... Yeah. yeah, that one, you go, girl. I think it's quite funny is, um, so the sect, everyone on the Sector 1 team, there's about, I think, 11 of us at the minute. Um, yeah. We all, we usually all kind of message during the race and it's all like, no, this just happened. Or why are they doing this? Why are they... Yeah. yeah, quite rowdy during a race because everyone's talking, all everyone's opinions kind of. It's, it's quite fun. It's like sitting in a room yeah. together and watching. It is fun, yeah. Um. And people were asking yesterday, surely if um, Alonso speeds up, then Fernand- um, then Esteban Ocon can get round and then the teammate game. We were like, Fernando Alonso, I think he's well past the whole team yeah. game now. I think he's had enough of that in his career and I don't think he wants any more to do with that. I really I do think that. he's doing a bit of a a bit of a Kimi Raikkonen in, in the fun. Just having fun. He's just having fun. He's here to enjoy yeah. He doesn't he's need been paid. to be here. No, he he's being paid. He has nothing to prove or, and nothing no. to lose. He has yeah, he's just living his, living his absolute best life. And finally, Lily, Sergio Perez wins the Monaco Grand Prix. Do you know what? I am quite happy about it. I'll say that. Like, I'm happy that a Red Bull driver won, but obviously not a girl. Um, I am quite happy he won. Mm-hmm. I think okay. he really does deserve it. He's a great driver. And unfortunately, in the position he's in, he is probably always going to be the second driver because he's up against Max Verstappen. Yeah. And obviously, um, like we saw last weekend, team orders came into play, which meant he couldn't win the race. I still um, think team orders will come into play for the rest of the season, no matter how close he gets to Max, because it, it, it's shoe in. Like, are you wearing the gold boots? Have you got the number one in your car? No, you haven't. You know, exactly. Because you won the championship last year. No, and team orders weren't really in the championship last year with Red Bull. 
Not really. Like, I don't care how good you are this year. Are you the champion? No. Are you on a 50-year contract? No. So stay in your lane, please, Sergio. But I think it was absolutely beautiful to see him get his third career win. Oh, and just, just and his Monaco. reaction. Exactly. On the podium. Imagine he's sad. Yes. Like, picture his dad when he won that. Freaking the out. Fact, the fact that he said he's new little baby, little baby girl. You know, it's just all so nice. Nice little bonus for baby girl, you know. <laughs> yeah, nice little present there for her coming. <laughs> nice little bit of money going to the trust fund. No, honestly, it's so nice to see. And I just thought, you know what? You, you are a deserving winner because it's nice to see other people. But please stay in lane for the rest of the season. I'm like, that's fine. Thank you. The podium was obviously made up with, um, I was about to say Charles Leclerc. It was not Charles Leclerc. It was it's Carlos subjective. Signs and then Max Verstappen with Charles Leclerc coming in a, in a comfortable P4. Obviously, and very angry and disappointed, but he finished George the P5. He is keeping up it. his record of a top five at every single Grand Prix this season. He is the only driver to do so. And oh my goodness, this man is a driver and a half, isn't he? Don't you think? I think he is but I think my personal favorite part of the whole weekend like going a little bit off topic is you know that obviously in qualifying we had like Perez in the wall and then signed in for him yeah. and then Max just sort of sat there and everyone's like unless you, if you told yourself like on Saturday like that's the podium yeah I know like, it's crazy them, isn't it them three there it's like I've seen that the in-between us like that a little bit like <laughs> the in-between us on a higher budget you know <laughs> A bit more money. <laughs> yeah, a little bit more money than the in-between. You know, they're in Monaco, they're not in, like, Falaraki. But it, it was a bit, I was like, yeah, you wouldn't believe it, would you? Because everyone, I, I thought Charlotte Claire, she went. But then Nico Rosberg did actually say, at the beginning of the weekend, he put a picture on him and was like, good luck to Charles. I really believe you'll win this weekend. And every time Nico Rosberg says something like that, that person doesn't win. <laughs> So. I, I'm still happy that Charles Leclerc managed to finish a race and I've said it before and I'll say it again I think because Charles Leclerc finished the Monaco Grand Prix for the first time in history I think that means he's going to be world champion I'm sorry to say it Lily but I really do believe that he's and that be is sex on podcast <laughs> And that is the end of today's podcast. The final thing I did want to bring up, though, is not Formula One related, but we are a motorsport platform, so we are allowed to talk about it. It was obviously the Indy 500 at the exact same time yesterday. And it's very well it documented. It's very well documented that I am a little bit of a Marcus Ericsson fan. Just a little bit of a fan. Yeah. I've spoken about it multiple times on this podcast and in our videos. I love Marcus Ericsson. And Marcus Ericsson won the Indy 500. Like, them last four laps, okay. Do you know what? I actually want, I, I'm a Scott Dixon fan in Indy. Like, I, mm. I will admit it. I only really watch the Indy 500 every year. I watch it every year without fail. And I have done for like six years now. Yeah. And I will admit that, you know, Scott Dixon's got a special place in my heart. I don't know why. I just I just love him. Like, I honestly, I have a lot of love for that man. I think he's an absolute insane driver. And it actually broke my heart that he got a penalty. Well, I know I know we're speeding in the pit lane, but, you know, yeah. who cares? It's Scott Dixon. Um, everyone's, say, everyone's saying it on social media at the minute, and I have to just join in and say it too. It was not the 2018 Salva driver that I pictured yeah. winning such a prestigious title yesterday. I really thought Charles Leclerc was going to win the Monaco Grand Prix, but no, Marcus Ericsson won yeah. the Indy 500. You know what I actually quite like though about Indy 500? It's going a little bit off topic. I just like how involved that like, the whole family is, like the driver. Yeah. You know, yeah. girlfriend, kids, mum, dad. Do you know what I mean? They, when they kiss like the brick road that goes across. Yeah. Like, everyone does it with them and like the milk's thrown on them. But do you know a little bit I found a bit saucy? Mm-hmm. No, that that little grid girl coming kissing him on the cheek with the red lipstick because his girlfriend was stood next to him. I thought mm, we don't be- I thought we don't his girlfriend stood behind him. His girlfriend looks immaculate. Like let's just say Beautiful. she looked insane. Like she had that really nice little blaze on her hair. Looked amazing. She was crying, she was laughing, amazing. And then she's like, I thought, mm, let's not do that. Let's not do that. <laughs> give give Stop. the lipstick to the girlfriend and then she can do that. <laughs> and then obviously heartbreak got this and then. I do, I do find one, I, I love the fact the family is so involved, like you said, but I did feel a bit bad for Marcus Ericsson's girlfriend when there's, there was about like eight laps to go. This was before the red flag was brought out. Yeah. And the cameras are just on her and she's there, obviously really nervous, being like, oh my God, eight laps, that my is... boyfriend might become the Indy 500 champion. Yeah. She's there moving around, like, you can tell she's nervous. And the camera yeah. stays on her, I was like, poor girl is like. That is, you know, like, usually what I. I know it's bad, but they do usually like the folks and the girlfriends a lot, which I quite like. I like I, I like the fact that girlfriends are involved. I think it's quite cute. Mm-hmm. It's like when Scott Dixon was, was finished the race and he was there, like his little mental breakdown. So his girlfriend, like his girlfriend was there sobbing to him. Mm-hmm. And like they just the cameras just on them too, I like, you know, full on like ugly crying on them both. And I was like, um let them do that in peace, please. Should we, should we just maybe move the cameras to winner and not the celebration? And now Mark Erickson is now winning um, leading the championship. Can I? I, I genuinely am such a big Mark Ericsson fan. I really, really think you know what, I talent, get it. which was so 
underrated. I maybe think Formula One wasn't for him. Wasn't for maybe him. Yeah. it wasn't the right the right seat for him to be in. But what it did do is it put him on a platform which allowed him to get into IndyCar. It it didn't allow him. That's the wrong word to use, but it no, absolutely well, helped him. It boosted him. Seat. So it gave him a little boost to push. He must have got some better sponsors for being in Formula One and having that kind oh, of hundred percent. Yeah, hundred um, percent. But yeah, that was. The Monaco Grand Prix and a little bit of the Indy 500 chucked in there. Yeah. Commiseries to Scott Dixon and um, uh, Pato Award as well. Cause... Just Scott Dixon. No, no Pato, Pato, my heart Pato lies. so close. <laughs> and my heart lies with Scott Dixon. Honestly, my favourite Indy driver. I remember it. It fell on my actual birthday last year and I was out. I remember. It. Like, it literally fell on my actual, like, my 18th last year and I was out and I made, I was out for free drinks. I made them put it on the big screen because... <laughs> I was not missing that for anyone. I was thinking, I do not care that it's my 18th. I'm not missing the Indy 500 for anyone, specifically, like, you know, after 2020 and everything. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm not missing it forward on my birthday again. Right. Well, that was Monaco. A big congratulations to Sergio Perez and an even and bigger congratulations was, yeah. to Marcus, Marcus Ericsson. Ericsson. And a happy birthday to Lily Morris, 33. Thank you. Bye.